Good morning, Auburn staff. It's Friday morning. It's September 24th. Today's a really big day. Uh, it's our pink out tailgate and the pink out football game. If you plan to show up, uh, just kind of keep in mind it is a fundraiser. And uh, so I'll make sure I have some cash in my pocket to kind of help out, you know, at the different booths or whatever we have in a typical year. You know, we're super serving food and doing contests and just just having a lot of fun. Um, the people who are organizing this year's I'm not quite sure how everything is going to look. I know this. I've told the kids, you got to show up. You got to be masked. Got to have your nose covered. So if you are a staff member and you show up, you guys know it works really well with the kids. Um, as reminders, just point at your nose um, or point at your mask and, and then, you know, try to be discreet about it. And our kids are really responsive to that. And they are kids. They forget sometimes. Um, and then we really got to make a big push to make sure we're masked for the football game, too. So anyway, we'll have an organized area out in the north lot. I hope you can make it. It is a wonderful event. Our friends from Auburn Mountain View will be there. Um, every year we do it. I'm never quite sure how it's going to look. I just know it always turns out really right. It turns out really good, and our kids mix really well together. So hopefully you can make that. And then also we're just finishing up our, what's this, our third, fourth week? I don't know. Um, it's going so fast, and we're really trying to be – explicit and strategic with how we're implementing the different routines around the school. Is it going perfect? It never does. Um, you know, when you got almost 2000 people under one roof, uh, what would be really helpful to us, the administrative team, is if you hang on to your kids and tell the bell, we're starting to see more kids creeping out of six period. I saw a lot of that yesterday. I also know we had a lot of substitutes in the building and I talked to a couple of kids on my way out to the buses in the commons. They weren't doing anything bad at all. They're just kind of hanging. It's just freedom for them just to get out of class. And, um, you know, it was the last few minutes of the day. I said, I bet you had a substitute six period. And almost every one of them said yes. I said, okay, I kind of expected that. So in your plans, if you can let your subs know, they got to hold that line. Reason being, the kids are great. But if something were to happen, there's very few of us. And that number starting to grow a little bit. The first couple of days, it was a little bit of a trickle. Yesterday, I'm going to say it was a couple dozen kids that I saw already walking down the stairs, we're already in the commons, and it was like 2.38, okay? We gotta hold them to the very end. The buses will not leave without them, as long as they're not kind of dilly-dallying around. Uh, today's another day, we all have a lot of subs in the building. We have a lot of people going to trainings. It's our new staff members going to the Capturing Kids Hearts training. I'm excited for them. Um, I'm sure by the end of the day, they're gonna be pretty tired. But anyway, it's been a great start. We're getting a lot of our routines in. We're gonna be pushing out a couple more next week. We got breakfast after the bell. Our kids really are doing a great job when it comes to the food. They're doing a fantastic job cleaning up after themselves. And I would say we've returned to a better um, situation when it comes to some of the things we expect from our kids. So we'll just keep reinforcing it, keep praising them. Um, we're also gonna start positive attendance next week. So it's gonna be like card scanning. And I think the kids can scan with their phones. Doug Bird has pushed out a little bit of information. Hillary Hamlet, she's hard at work with her, her students, her leadership kids. They're going to push out a video so it'll resonate a little bit better for our students. I think the big message we got to tell kids is they are accountable. They are empowered to take care of their own school attendance. So they are marked absent. That's the default. And until they show up into your classroom and scan, um, they're absent. So if they don't do that, um, it's kind of a non-argument. They weren't there. And then, of course, us in attendance, uh, counseling, we'll work on kids that are, you know, are kind of our frequent uh, flyers, frequent minnows. I like to call them minnows, but a little bit of sharks and minnows in the hallway, which, which is pretty cool because right now we've identified four kids that are kind of like consistently not going to class. We've got their schedules. We know where to walk them to. We're going to keep being persistent, fighting that battle. Um, but I'd say for the most part, beyond the most part, I mean, almost every single kid in the school, they're getting to class, you know, within time. It's a long walk, crowded hallways, crowded stairwells, especially. So I'm just not interested in tardies right now. You know, if you guys, if any of you are interested in really enforcing a tardy policy, please come and talk to me. Let me know what your challenges are. If you're on kind of the outer ends of the building, like way down in automotives. Um, I think PE, you've got a little bit of um, wiggle room with the way kids have to dress up. I'm not quite sure yet. Or if you're up on the third floor, just know some of your kids have to walk the whole four blocks the building sits on. So 
you know, learning is the focus and the kids have given the right amount of time, they can make it. We're always going to have those handful. They're going to drag their feet. We can give them 10 minutes and they're going to drag their feet. So yes, eventually we'll get to tardies. We're eventually going to install the 10, 10 rule. Once kids are in class, they're there for the next 10 minutes before you can let them go use the restroom, you know, barring an emergency. And then they'll stay the last 10 minutes because you guys have to share your learning targets. You have to share good things, uh, success criteria at the end of class. You want to wrap it up. You want to have a meaningful wrap up, uh, a launch and uh, affirm them for all the good work they're doing. So let's continue doing what we're doing. Um, hearing lots of good things out there. Uh, today's Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday. We're here and uh, really looking forward to next week. If you're a teacher listening to this, uh, we need to wrap up the P048 form by next Friday. And the following Friday is kind of our deadline for getting in your syllabus outlines. You guys have a form for that. So I wanna thank everybody for everything they're doing. Um, kind of my small win, because <laughs> remember I said, we're gonna try to track small wins. Is this our bus area, man? It was just crazy pandemonium the first few days. And thank goodness we let the kids out early because we needed that. We probably needed 20 minutes, but we got it done. And now I'm not going to say it's run like a, a Swiss watch or any type of precision. It's better. And I can see that the uh, transportation department, they're also becoming more calibrated and aligned, figuring out their route. So it's getting better. Um, I'd say I love October. October is always my favorite month of the year. Even when I was teaching and coaching, because it just seemed like the kids were in good routines, the weather, I love the weather of the fall. Obviously, Friday night football games. We had a great Wednesday volleyball match. Um, anyway, lots of energy, lots of good things going on. I just feel like schools really kind of kick into full um, everything by October. It's always been my favorite month of the year. Um, I hope it's not one that's lengthy and drags for you. And if you do need some energy, come on over. We'll talk about October because I love it. All right. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thank you for all you're doing, you guys.